Hey y'all, we're gonna use pancakes, one of my all-time favorite breakfasts, in order to better understand machine learning. So come on, let's learn. In this video, we're gonna be working through the content related to the How Models Work section in the Kaggle Intro to Machine Learning course. As we dive in, I wanna share with you how each video is structured. Every video starts with a lesson before moving into key points. In the key points section, we'll be looking at an example using a hypothetical pancakes data frame with pancake recipe information. The information covered in the key points section is designed to get you ready for the deeper dive. The deeper dive is where we'll be working through code and examples from the Kaggle Intro to Machine Learning course using the Melbourne Housing dataset. You're welcome to access the course on Kaggle and read ahead, follow along, or read through the material after watching the video. Remember, these videos are not required to complete the course. Once we finish the deeper dive, we'll do a quick recap of what we've learned and then get ready for the next lesson in the series. I made these amazing pancakes using all-purpose flour, buckwheat flour, egg sugar, cinnamon, maple syrup, and butter. And making these pancakes involved making a lot of decisions. First and foremost, did I want pancakes? Um, yes. Always yes. But then decisions around things like what did I want in my pancakes? What kind of toppings did I want for my pancakes? You get the idea. So something as seemingly straightforward as making pancakes actually involves a lot of decisions. And we can use something called a decision tree to both map out all of the possible decisions as well as the decisions that I made like this. Each major decision happened at what we call a node and resulted in a split. And the split is the result of something like a yes or no question. Like, do I want fruit in my pancakes? Or a split can be the result of a numerical value, like the ratio of all-purpose flour to buckwheat flour. And as we trace a path through the decision tree, we ultimately get to kind of the end of the tree in something that we call a leaf. Now, this doesn't necessarily look a lot like a tree, so let's flip it over so we can see the resemblance. Let's talk about this in context of our pancakes. Let's pretend for a moment that there's an international pancake competition, and we wanna come up with a recipe that will get us the highest rating on a continuous 10-point scale. One approach would just be to use the recipe we have on hand and hope for the best. But instead, what if we put our newly acquired machine learning skills to the test? We can do this by finding hundreds, thousands, or even millions of different pancake recipes and listing out all of their ingredients and corresponding international pancake competition ratings into a table, like this, where each row is a recipe and each column is the amount of ingredients in the given recipe. Then we could fit a decision tree model to this data set and use it to help predict the best combination of ingredients in order to make the highest rated pancake. What we're hoping to accomplish by doing this is to use the model we build to uncover or explain the relationship between the inputs, the pancake ingredients, and output, the pancake rating. A common pattern that you're going to see is that we define a model, we fit a model, we make predictions, and then we validate our model. Now, in this lesson, we're just gonna cover the first three, defining a model, fitting a model, and making predictions using our model. When we define a model, what you wanna do is think to yourself, what model would I like to use? Of course, as you develop your machine learning skills, you'll have a wide array of models to choose from, and you'll start to develop a sense as to which models would be best suited for any given task. If we wanna think about this in more general terms, we could abstractly represent a model using code that says, my underscore model equals model name. Pretty straightforward. Fitting a model is another way to refer to training a model. And essentially what we're doing is we're taking the model that we've defined and we're applying that model to our data set. And we're asking it to start pulling out the underlying patterns in the data. So an abstract code snippet for what fitting a model might look like is my underscore model dot Fit. And then in parentheses, we've got data of some kind. Making predictions is what happens once we've built a model and we want to generalize it or extend it or apply it to data that it's never seen before. And I know it's kind of silly to talk about what a model sees since technically it's a piece of code and it doesn't have eyes, but just roll with me on this one. A general way to write making predictions would be something like my underscore model dot predict. And then again, in parentheses, data. 
let's apply all of this to what we've talked about in this lesson. So what type of model have we talked about so far? Exactly, decision trees. And we've talked about decision trees in the context of predicting housing prices for Melbourne, Australia. So without even knowing what our data looks like yet, we could guess that our model process might look something like this, where we define our model, and we'll name it Melbourne underscore housing underscore model, and we'll set it equal to a decision tree model. So we've defined our model. Then we're gonna fit our model or train our model. And that's when we're gonna take our Melbourne underscore housing underscore model. And then we're gonna add a dot fit. And then we're gonna run that on some type of housing data. And when we make predictions, we're gonna do Melbourne underscore housing underscore model dot predict. And that's gonna be on some type of housing data. Now, none of these lines of code will actually work. I don't have this hooked up to a data set. And these aren't exactly the correct terms that we would use when writing the code. So all of this is for demonstration. And while there will be differences between what we just typed and what we'll actually be building starting in the next lesson, I hope that this helps make the idea of creating a model a little less abstract and a little more concrete. So between everything we've covered in this video, along with what you've read and explored on the Kaggle Intro to Machine Learning course, How Models Work, this is a summary of some of the major points that we've covered. One, decision trees are a type of model. Two, capturing patterns from data is called fitting or training the model. Three, the data used to fit the model is called the training data. Four, after the model has been fit, you can apply it to new data to make predictions. And five, the point at the bottom of a tree where we make a prediction is called a leaf. As we close out this section, I have a couple of questions for you to think about. First, take what you know about houses or housing prices uh, and what we've just learned about decision trees and think about this. Could you add additional nodes to this decision tree? What would those nodes possibly be? And what might some of the benefits and or drawbacks of adding nodes to this decision tree be? And it's okay if you don't know the answer to any of those questions yet. You'll have a really good handle on all of this by the end of the course. So in the meantime, let's dive right into basic data exploration with the Intro to Machine Learning series here on Kaggle Learn.